Bring him out, Cabaret. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. For God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is the day that the Lord has given us. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in this day. This morning, he woke me up and started me on my way. And you know what? I'm glad about it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Could have been dead. Laying somewhere in the grave. But he told death and sickness to behave. Ain't that a good God? We ought to praise him today. We ought to lift him up. We ought to magnify his name. Our God is a great God. Our God is a wonderful God. Our God is a loving God. To those who are visiting, we're glad to see you. To those who are regular attendees, we're glad to see you. There's strength in numbers, amen? When we all get together, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we come today with thanksgiving on our heart, thanking you for the many fold blessings that thou hast so graciously bestowed upon us. We realize, Master, who you are. We realize who we are. And it is our duty and responsibility to call upon an all-powerful and an all-wise God to say thank you. You brought us, you taught us, you kept us, and you have never left us. We pray, Master, that a song will be sung, the preach word preach, or a testimony given that will lift us just a little bit higher. So somebody will say, I found a Savior, and he sweet I know. Hold us, Lord. Mold us, Lord. Shape us, Lord. Make us what you would have us to be. Get out of our own mean selves. And you just jump right in. For when you get in it, get in, Lord, we know everything is going to be all right. Bless those, dear Lord, who will hear the sound of Mount Calvary today. If they don't know Jesus and the free pardoning of their sins, we pray that a song will be sung or the preach word preach or the scripture read that will give them and move them from their state of despondency. We need you, Lord. If we've ever needed you before, we sure do need you now. We've been up, down, almost level to the ground. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me, all that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thanks, thank you, Lord, for that rest you gave me last night. Thank you for that peace you gave me. Even though the storms were raging and the lightning was flashing and the rain was coming down, Lord, you gave us peace in the midst of the storm. We love you, Lord. Because you first love us, move us in the direction to tell somebody that Jesus is the son of the living God that shed his blood on Calvary. We're going to celebrate that today, Master. Yes, sir. We're going to celebrate your blood that was shed on Calvary for a sinner like me. Yes, sir. We love you, Lord. Yes, sir. We just pray that everything we do in this place will be done to thy glory. Somebody, somebody is sick and may not get well. Somebody's soul, Lord, may be on the way to a burning hell. Yes, sir. Speak right now to our hearts and let us know that everything is going to be all right. Hear this, our prayer. 
grant us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
will never yes. lose yes. its power. Amen. It reaches yes. to the highest mountain. Yes. It reaches to the lowest yes. valley. Yes. The blood that Calvary that was shed for you and me. Yes. He's worthy right to be praised. His blood woke us up this morning.
might not see it now, but you saved the best for all who trust you and obey. There is an answer, no more delay, and I'll just say yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. you glad that my life is in God's hand. Amen. 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 My life couldn't put it in the hands of man. Man let you down. Man will mess you up. Man will put a wrench in your situation. Man will cause you to fall. Man will cause you to stumble. Man will cause you to skip a beat. But when your life is in his hand, he can do more of your life than you can do with it for yourself. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Every now and then, life would cause you to do something for the first time. And for the first time, because of the storm and rain, my printer got locked up in the storm. Put everything on my tablet. Then found out the Wi-Fi wasn't kicking in this morning. So I said, can I go get my phone, just in case. And I hadn't wore all the batteries down. While able to see something. <laughs> but God is good. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for just giving us another opportunity to come to this place once more again. To see the lovely faces, Lord to see the smiles, Lord. It reminds us, Lord, that you once again, on purpose, chose this day for us to come and worship. Thank you, Lord. 
Early morning rising, thank you, Lord. Song we've heard, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the prayer. Thank you, sir. But Lord, most of all, Lord, we come now for your proclamation. Let your words fall off these lips of clear for music that we'll hear. That through it all you may be edified, glorified, and magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hayes, for reading. Giving our prayer this morning, Pastor Matthew, he texted me yesterday. He's still on vacation. We pray that his family have a safe journey up and down the dangerous highway. And to all the saints of God, those who are watching, sinners of their beginning, there is a word from the Lord. You will find it in Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 19. Look, the 15th chapter, and it reads, And the young of them said to his father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he delivered, so he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions and with prodigal living. But when he had spent it all, there arose severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he set him into his field to feed swines. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. That slop, pig food, meat byproducts that we wouldn't eat. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of the hired servants. Take your neighbor by the hand, look them in the eye, if you're not too contrary. It's a neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Preacher's going to talk about. Talk about. Watch, me Watch me get up. And look at somebody on the other side of you, if you're not too mean. It's a neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Preacher's going to talk about. Watch me get up. Me get Give the Lord a hand, come of praise. Watch me get up. There are a whole lot of folks who are stuck in some unwanted situation. There are a whole lot of folks that are in, in places in their life right now that they really don't want to be in. Some is not because their desire is to be there or to dwell there or to hang out there but they are stuck in something and just can't seem to move. Other folk are in the situation that they're in because you made some wrong decisions. You've allowed friends or your so-called friends to influence your decision. God has opened a door for you. Instead of you just walking through your door, you ask your friend, your BFF, your besties, what you ought to do. God done showed you. He done made a way for you. But to keep the friendship, you let them talk you out of a blessing. Oh, that's a long way to go for a job. Yes, yeah, a job. I don't know. Um, I tell you what, can you take me to the mall, gallery of mall, and your job is in Franklin. You want to drive. You won't drive 30 miles for a job. They'll entice you to go to Nashville. Hey, let's go to Atlanta this weekend. 
You listen to your friends or so-called friends. Don't you fool yourself. Everybody not your friend. Everybody not your friend. Can I give you some free? <clears throat> Bad relationships can spin you out of control and put you in some situation that's unhappy, unpleasant, and sometimes inescapable. When we look in Luke, this 15th chapter of Luke this morning, we notice the same thing we've seen down through the years. This young son, this young man, did everything that he could to avoid returning to his father's house. You know the story. You, 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 you know what he asked for. You know what his father gave him. And just like many of us, we would do anything and try anything prior to removing ourselves from the situation we get ourselves in. But the good news is, if you find yourself down, what got you down does not have to keep you down. If you make up your mind to get up, no matter how far you have gone, no matter how terrible it may seem, if you make up your mind, you can get up. There's three things in this text that we need to notice about this son. And the first thing we notice is his rebellion. The first thing is his rebellion. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided it to him, his, them, his livelihood. Not only did the father give it to the youngest son. He said, well, since the oldest boy is here, I'm giving his too. I remember, I told you, my mama was a peculiar woman. I remember me and Sid did something, but I didn't do it. Sid did it. But she whipped both of us. And I said, Ma, I didn't do it. Sid did it. And you know what she told me? This just in case you thought about it. The prodigal son father, the oldest son didn't ask for nothing. But just in case he thought about it, the Bible says, I'm looking, I'm like, what? Just in case. Jesus doesn't address it. Only one son asked for his inheritance. But the Bible says he gave it to both of them. This young man didn't appreciate how good he had it. His home was cleaner than the pig pen. His home was more friendlier than the outside world. He had a roof over his head. And we used to say in the military, he had three hots in the cot. If you got a roof over your head three meals a day and something were to lay your head, you're doing all right. Some people, some people are pushing baskets. Around some folk are playing, some folk ain't playing. Everything they got in that basket belongs to them. Don't you fool yourself. Don't you think you can't find yourself in a place where you're pushing a basket? Don't laugh too quick. You never know how. Some just one paycheck away from pushing baskets. Yes, he had a home where his father cared about him. He had a home where there was plenty of food to eat. He had the wrong attitude. 
He expected things at home to be given to him on a silver platter. And that's what's wrong, I think, with the world today. Too many folk have the attitude and they try to go through life with the attitude of entitlement. And they think the world owes them something. Can I give you a second thing for free? And this is the reality. Nobody owes you anything but a chance. Nobody owes you anything but a chance. We look at our history, Brown versus the Board of Education. It wasn't about going to the same schools. We didn't want the same books. You just give us a chance and watch me do what I can do. All we need is a chance. The Kaskiki Airmen, all they needed was a chance. I don't care what the other man's side said about their brain couldn't fly. They just said, put me in the air and let me do what I can do. All you need is a chance. Just let me in the door. May not have the education that you have, but you just give me a chance to get on that floor. And I'll run that machine better than anybody. A lot of you got what you got all because they gave you a chance. You weren't the smartest. You didn't have it all going on, but they let you in. And God gave you what you need, and you took advantage of your chance. Yes. And what you do with that chance is up to you. Most folk in the situation they're in, because they didn't realize how good they had it. This young man was reminded real quick in a hurry what Proverbs 13, 15 says, and it reads in the King God Word translation, good sense brings favor, but the way of treacherous people is always the same. Deacon Mitchell used to have a saying, he said, you know what, Brother Preacher? You can't beat sense, but I'm talking about good sense. <laughs> good sense. That what the Bible says brings favor when you use what God has given you with the urgency of the Holy Spirit. It'll bring favor in your life. But the way of treacherous folk, folk who don't use what God gave them, is always the same. You see the folk who want to tell you you weren't going to make it? They're doing the same old thing while you're moving on. The one said, I, I, I can't do that kind of work. And had the same opportunity that you have, but refused. Then the same state. And it's been said that if you're doing the same thing the same way and getting the same results, that's a sign. I just thought I'd leave it right there. Because ain't nobody going to say, he called me crazy. <laughs> but if you're not getting any result, that's the same. That's a sign. You're not crazy. But you have some crazy tendencies. We see his rebellion. But the second thing we notice is, he'll ruin. The Bible says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession in prodigal living. This story is put in the same category 
of the lost sheep and the lost coin. But the word prodigal doesn't mean lost. The word prodigal means wasteful. He wasn't lost. He was just out of place. He wasn't homeless. He was houseless. I shared with y'all many times before, my, my grandfather couldn't live with us because he had a drinking problem. But my grandfather was never in the streets. He had a roof over his head. I don't remember as a child growing up anybody not having a place to lay their head. You didn't see folk. You may be houseless, but you got a home. You got someone. How can you be homeless when you're somebody's son, somebody's father? Somebody's brother, somebody, so you may be houseless. You may choose to live a way that you can't be in the house. You can't have nobody tearing up your house. You can't leave confusion and hatred in your house. So you may be houseless, but you're not homeless. This young man, if we look in this text, this young man, after many days, found himself in a far country, wasted everything he had, everything. He went out of control. He whined, he dined with the women he thought was fine. And the Bible says, this is the translation, the same women that he was all into and was all into him when he didn't have nothing. They blocked his number. <laughs> Unfriended him on Facebook. Quit letting him follow them on Twitter. He wasted not only his daddy's money, but his own money. And if you have a gift and don't use it, you're wasting it. And waste is waste. You can sing and won't sing, you're wasting it. If you can read and won't read, you're wasting it. You can be in the best condition, but if you don't use your condition to do what you can do for other folk, you're wasting it. And waste always equals wants. If you waste love, you want some kind of companionship or some kind of relationship. If you waste good advice, you're going to have to sleep in the bed that you lay in. This young man lived a life that was out of control. When he sinned, he sinned big time. He let it all hang out. He did everything that he thought was big and bad. Dad, give me my money. I know more about it. You give me my money, I can do what I want to. I'll show you something. i see how you handle them. Let me do my own thing. And the Bible says that when he did his own thing, he found himself in a bad way. And don't you fool yourself. It wasn't too long ago that all of us thought we were just wasting our time. All of us was wasting our energy, all of us was wasting 
our life. Don't you fool yourself. You ain't always had it together. Somebody had to pull you in somewhere down the road. Some of us, if we had kept going in the direction we were going in, we would have been over the edge a long time ago. Nobody could convince this young man that he didn't have it all going on. And nobody could convince this young man that he was headed to the hog pen. And I found out something a long time ago. If a person have a cause in their mind to do what they're doing, and if they think they're right in what they're doing, you can't find the cause for them to do what's truly right. Nobody could convince them, man, you're going to spend all, I wouldn't buy that. Hold on to that for a little while. Don't be so quick. We tell our children, don't be so quick to grow up. A lot of us found out the hard way. Soon as I get any time getting out of the house, okay. <laughs> Here you go. Sometime we can get an attitude, and if we're not careful, our attitude will give us pig pen tendencies. And don't you fool yourself, a whole lot of folk up in here right now. Got some pig pen tendencies. Your attitude says pig pen. The places you go says pig pen. The Bible says, verse 15, then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that far country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Sin will wipe the smile off your face. Sin will steal your joy. And sin will carry you as far down as down is. He found himself wanting, desiring to eat the same food that the hogs was eating. All of us seeing buzzers. Get in, they just everywhere now. You'll see them eating on a dead carcass or armadillo or deer on the highway. And others would join them in. There's nothing desirable to make me want to eat what they're eating. And a lot of us have seen what Hog food looked like. My mother used to save, had a big old can. She saved for a guy to feed his hogs. BB Dad used to feed their hogs. Come get this can of stuff. It had corn and stuff, that stuff in that, that, well, that was good when it was out. But now that it's going to the hogs, it's been there a while. It's not fit to eat. What you ate the night before, is not fit to eat when it becomes hog food. This young man was looking at the food that the hog was eating, and the Bible says he desired to eat the hog food. When life had brought you down as far as down is, the only direction you can go from there is up. And the Bible says, and the third thing we know says, his return. But when? He came to himself. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish in hunger? I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that I serve a God that though I leave him, he won't leave me. At first, the young man wanted to be by himself. At first, he wanted to leave his father's house. But the Bible says, when self got
that's some sense. It was later that he came to himself. He saw the difference in the way he looked at his father. He saw everything at home in a different way. When he looked back over his life, the Bible says, when he thought about how good his father had been to him, the Bible says he decided to go home. Pastor Hayes and I were talking this week and we noticed something. We talked about this. We said, you know, every time you read God's word, you see something. When you go back, you see something else. I looked at this text and I noticed something about the prodigal son and the prodigal son father. The father, all throughout the parable as Jesus speaks, he didn't change. You know how we do it. You, you let your children come with me and say, and, and be a man and tell you what he really thinks. You know how we really do. We, we would tell them, okay, you'd be grown and gone. We would have a different attitude. But the prodigal father didn't change the economy at the father's house. Didn't change. He gave both his sons everything that they needed. But his bank account didn't change. There was no shortage of food. His cable still worked. Wi-Fi going on, AC kicking in, pool being maintained, servant getting raises, clothes getting sewn, clothes getting bought, clothes getting worn, clothes getting given away. Everything was the same at home. Everything was the way he left it. He didn't know. But his father kept his room just as clean and neat as it was when he left. His name was still on his father's lips when they prayed before they ate. His name was still on his father's lips when he prayed at night, Lord, take care of my son. It reminds of what Hebrew says in Hebrew 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday Today and forevermore, the prodigal saw the same thing this time, but he saw it through different eyes. Experience transformed them. Sometimes what mom and daddy tell you don't register until you hit rock bottom. And the Bible says in Psalm 119 and 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statue. Every now and then, let them fall. Every now and then, let them lose a car. Every now and then, let them lose that home. Every now and then, let them lose that job. You told them over and over and over again. But every now and then, sometimes they have to hit rock bottom. You don't cause the fall. You're praying that they do all right. But at the same time, Every now and then, a cut on the knee is a good thing. Every now and then, a bump on the head is a good thing. Every now and then, a hand on the bottom is a good thing. Sin had kicked them, knocked them down. And then he made up in his mind that I'm going to get up and confess up. He said, I refuse to stay down here. I refuse to be bound. The Bible says, he said, until he reached that point, he thought his dad didn't know his dad was talking about. But then he found out that God is still a God of sufficiency. 
God is still a God of grace. No matter how far you go away from God, he's still a God of grace. Aren't you glad we serve a God that has some grace? No matter how far you go, God's grace will bring you back home. Sometimes we have to let go and let God. We got to understand that we can't do it by ourselves. We got to understand that we can't escape the sin, the grip of sin that's on us every now and then we've got to be reminded that it's time to turn it around. The father gave his son. The Bible says, you read the rest of the story. The Bible says, when he saw him afar off, his father ran to him. Clothes dirty, face dirty, Smell and dirty, but the Bible says his father was looking for him. And when his father ran to him, he didn't take a washcloth with him. He didn't take soap and water with him. He didn't look at him and say, man, boy, where you been? When he went to him, all he saw was his son. He kissed his dirty face, hugged his smelly body. He was happy, crying, tears in his eyes. His son had come home. He gave him a kiss instead of a lecture. He said, Dad, I'm going to come home. Dad, I, I realize I need a job. He said, now, you ain't got to put me at the top. I'll just be an hourly worker. But the Bible says that instead of telling him what a problem he was, he gave him a promotion. And not only did he give him a promotion, but the Bible said he gave him a party. He gave him the best robe, the best ring, and the best shoes. His father, listen now, his father was not concerned about his past. His father was concerned about his present. So many children won't go home to mom and daddy. Because they know they're going to remind them of their past. Nobody wants to be reminded of their past. Can I give this for free? When folk try to remind me of my past, I remind myself of my future. God had promised never to leave me nor forsake me. This young man said, you know what? I know what I've done, but my daddy saw me as his son. Every time he said, servant, the father said, son. Every time he said, servant, the father said, son. Give me my robe. Give me my ring. You're still my son. I know you're messed up, but you're my son. You look back how good I was to you, and I came running to you because I knew that down through the years, you'll realize how much I love you. Every now and then, we don't know how much we love our children until they get away from us. When they come home, hug them and let them know how much you love them. The Bible says... He gave him another chance. And I'm so glad that I'm like that prodigal son. I've messed up in my life, but I've confessed up in my life. Don't you fool yourself. You've messed up in your life. You confessed up with your life. Some folk used to say, things I used to do, things I don't do no more. <laughs> and Cousin Billy Patrick said one time, he said, Rev, something about your faith, something medication stop you from doing. <laughs> Some folk ain't drink or they can't, they, that medication they take <laughs> won't let them, he, <laughs> it made a lot of sense. So don't get so holy and talk about some things you don't do no more. The Bible says, when he confessed up, he got up, told his father that I want to come back home. And the father opened up his arms and loved on him. Ain't that good news? Aren't you glad that you don't have to stay where you are? Aren't you glad you can get up out of your sin, get up out of your shame, get up out of your difficulties because God has forgiven you over and over and over? I don't care what the world remembers. One of the worst things folk can tell you is, 
Well, you may delete it off Facebook, you may delete it off Twitter, you may delete it off TikTok, but it's never gone. But when the God's in charge of it, when God wiped your slate clean, it's clean. Man might bring it up. The world might bring it up. But God said, any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. I'm glad he loved me enough. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to ride my own But the master of the sea, he heard our despairing cry from the water, lifted me now safe, safe, safe in my love, lifted me. Didn't love lift you up? Didn't love bring you a mighty long way? He died but didn't stay dead. Sunday morning came. He got up. All power in his hands. Is there anybody here love my Jesus? Anybody here love my Lord? Won't he make a way for you? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If he do it, say yes. Say yes. Oh, say yes. Watch me get up. I can walk with the best of them. Not as fast, but I can get up with the best of them because God loves me with an amazing love. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay the same. You can get up if you give yourself to the Lord. Put your hand in his hand. And watch him move. That's what Jojo was singing about. Put it in his hands. It may be somebody here this morning. You tried everything else. I offer you Christ. Give yourself to him this morning. He's worthy. He died for your sin. Just give yourself away. Just surrender yourself. You know how it is. When the blue lights be swirling and you've been caught, they tell you to raise your hand up, put them on the car, and then they give you that Miranda. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. And if you broke, the system got one for you. That's my translation. But with God, he said, just raise your hand to me. Give up to me. When you give up to me, I'm just going to tell you you have the right now to the tree of life. And you don't have the right to remain silent. Because now that you're part of my program, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. We're holding nothing. I surrender. Will you come? I surrender all. Everything. Yeah.